So, uh, welcome everybody. Um, Lupita, can you just confirm if you can see my screen? Yep, I can see it. Okay, great. And we have started recording. So just wanna let everyone know that we are recording tonight's meeting and um, a recording will be put on the website uh, following tonight's meeting, but letting everyone know that uh, we have started recording. And uh, so if you know any neighbors or friends that weren't able to attend tonight, um, there will be an opportunity to watch the meeting, get the information, and we'll talk a bit more too about you know, other opportunities to participate in the strategic plan and this visioning um, exercise we're gonna be doing tonight. But Welcome everybody, thanks for being here. I see one or two people still in the waiting room, so we'll just let them in and then we can get started. So as people join and before we sort of fully kick things off, um, I'll just introduce myself. I'm Meredith Perks. I'm with Van de Waal and Associates, and we've been working with the city of Mil Middleton on this um, strategic plan uh, process, and um, have been which has been underway for a few months now. And um, we're really glad to be here tonight for our visioning workshop. We uh, do have a few little pieces of Zoom housekeeping to touch base on before we get started. Um, as I mentioned, the meeting is being recorded, so uh, just be aware of that. And the recording will be posted on the strategic plan um, page of the city's website after the meeting. We're asking everybody for uh, the interest of the recording and for the progress of the meeting to remain muted until we get into the breakout sessions, just to cut down on interruption or background noise and that sort of thing. So asking you to stay muted until the breakout session. Um, if you would you know, need to be unmuted to either ask a question when that opportunity is provided, or um, if you have an, uh, a technical question, um, please use the chat function, which you can see when you kind of look at your, your uh, toolbar, uh, the chat little speech window there, or speech bubble, um, feel free to put a question on um, being unmuted or a technical question, that would probably be the best use for the chat. And then, um, you know, if you have any, you know, ongoing questions or anything like that, my contact information is here that you can email me and we'll provide that uh, contact information again later in the presentation, but um, just wanted to touch base on that. So from there, I think we're ready to get started um, with the content. So uh, I think to kind of kick things off and welcome everybody, um, Bill from the city of Middleton can turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you, Meredith. I'm Bill Burns. I'm the Assistant City Administrator and Finance Director for the City of Middleton. I'd like to thank you all for being here tonight and participating in the process. I wanted to acknowledge and, and welcome several of our elected officials that are here this evening, uh, Mayor Gurdeep Brar, as well as Council Members Susan West, Katie Nelson, Kathy Olson, and Mark Sullivan. If there's anyone that I, I missed uh, that came in, uh, please let me know, but thank you for being here and participating. Um, our city administrator, Mike Davis, is gonna be joining uh, later this evening. He's coming back from a, another commitment. He did share a couple comments that he asked me to share with you to, to kick things off. And some of his observations from his 23 years working as city administrator for city of Middleton. And one of his comments is that he really sees that the city is at a crossroads in a, a lot of ways, uh, financially, uh, looking at growth, looking at services, looking at sustainability and what our priorities are for the future and hoping that this process will help guide the next several years and well into the future for the city of Middleton. A couple of specific items he noted um, to, to keep in consideration. Uh, we continue to be very constrained by property tax levy limits imposed by the state of Wisconsin. Those levy limits tie the growth of our property tax, which is our main operating revenue, to new growth with no allowance for inflation. And over time, what we've seen is that uh, we are using that growth to help pay for the inflationary cost increases that are part of, of doing business as, as a government. And that's only getting worse as prices continue to rise. And with that, it's really constraining our growth and staffing and our ability to continue to offer and maintain very high quality services. 
It also means that um, growth is very important for our budget and geographically Middleton is very constrained due to a number of factors, uh, both geography, uh, development around the community as well as boundary agreements we have with other communities. And our primary growth areas are some limited areas to the north and to the northeast. And other than that, a lot of growth that will happen over the next uh, couple of decades is likely to be infill development. And infill development is not easy, uh, brings challenges, it brings changes. And discussing what type of development we wanna see, what level and how to manage that is an important thing to consider as part of this process. Um, other items that he identified as kind of key issues for the city. Uh, we've had tremendous success in our business park and our tax increment financing districts, uh, including one of the most successful in the state with our TIF district number three. Uh, over the years, that has helped return several hundred millions of dollars of tax base uh, to the, the outside of the TIF and to the general tax benefit for both the city as well as schools, county, and the other taxing jurisdictions. Uh, that district is going to be closing in 2030. And while that may seem like a ways off uh, in financial terms and for planning, that's really not that far into the future. And that provides a really unique opportunity for the city to consider how we're going to be uh, managing the additional revenues and the additional tax base from that closure and how we wanna position ourselves for the future. So that's something to, important to consider. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about sustainability, renew renewable energy and efforts that the city can do to um, help address climate change and help make its budgets and its operations more sustainable, both within city government and within the community. That's a critical issue. And you know, finally, as we go through this process, that you know, we should be really thinking about not just the next year or two or five, but what the vision is for Middleton in the long term, what our priorities are, what we wanna be as a community, and how do we uh, develop a roadmap to get from where we are today to achieve those priorities. So a lot of really important issues to address. I appreciate all of you being here tonight to help us participate in this process. I look forward to the discussion. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Scott Harrington uh, from the, the Van de Waal and Strategic Planning Team. Thanks, Mel. Um, I want to kind of just start out uh, with uh, what the purpose of uh, tonight's meeting is, and then we'll go a little bit into uh, the strategic plan, what that means. Uh, we'll then ask a few questions to get a sense of who all is with us tonight. And then we uh, will go over uh, a quick summary of the data that we've collected so far and some of the uh, initial things that we've heard from the various groups that we've talked to. And then um, half the time is really going to be spent listening to all of you. Uh, we're going to go into some breakout groups, into smaller groups, um, ask some questions about what makes Middleton meaningful to you, um, what are you excited about, what are you concerned about, so that we can form a, a vision uh, as sort of the front end of then putting a plan together. So let's start with the uh, strategic plan overview. Um, um, I'm Scott Harrington with Vandewall and Associates. We're the lead consultant on the project, uh, assisting us with this as uh, EQT by design. And we have Myra uh, with us here tonight. She'll be one of the breakout session uh, hosts. Uh, and then Meredith and uh, Lupita Alvarez with our firm will also uh, be assisting with that. Uh, we may, uh, depending on how many folks we have here tonight, uh, have uh, Bill uh, and or Abby um, attuned with the city uh, host a, a breakout session of two. Uh, also on our team is Public Administration Associates. Uh, uh, they're not able to be with us tonight, but uh, this is a company that uh, really specializes in local government uh, structure and finance, and so they've handled those uh, aspects of the project. Process that uh, we laid out is for a strategic plan. Um, I think, as many of you know, the city completed a comprehensive plan uh, just at the end of last year, beginning of this year. It's an excellent plan. It's really been very helpful for us as a start. Uh, but there's some differences between a strategic plan and a comprehensive plan uh, where the two really work together. So the comprehensive plan um, is really broad and aspirational. It really takes a look at the physical growth uh, of the community. And one of the centerpieces of the comprehensive plan is the future land use map. What, what goes where that eventually kind of translates into zoning and, and kind of how the community physically gets built out. Um, 
there was a very uh, robust engagement process with that. And so we've reviewed uh, what came out of that. And we're looking at that plan as a foundation for this one, not trying to go back and revisit things. Uh, there was a vision included with that plan, but what we want to do is kind of tailor that vision a little bit more uh, in a strategic uh, form to really guide this process. So a strategic plan is really a, a plan for the organization. What does the, if, what does the city need to do to realize the vision and, and hopes and aspirations of its people? Um, how many staff do we need and which departments? How should we be structured? How do we prioritize our funding? So the strategic plan will be very detailed um, uh, roadmap for the staff and the council uh, as they seek to continue to grow and improve the community in a way uh, that is meaningful and helpful to uh, all of the residents. So again, city facilities, uh, sustainability, uh, community campus planning, diversity, equity, inclusion, all of those uh, will be addressed in the strategic plan. The process that we uh, have, uh, I know this graphic is uh, a pretty complex and uh, the city does have a web page where all the strategic plan information can be found and including this graphic. So you wanna spend some more time, but we basically broke it into four processes, four steps. Uh, the first one we completed earlier this year, a meeting with the council about how they wanted to go about this process, who they wanted to engage and how to do that. And then um, over the summer and now into early fall, we've been into this step two of really gathering information that we're gonna share with you tonight uh, through uh, vision panels that we have uh, conducted uh, that uh, uh, six different ones, community youth, uh, seniors, uh, community influencers, underrepresented communities, uh, the schools and the business community. So we had the, uh, focus groups with uh, each of those. And then we're having this public event to kind of share what we have uh, so that you, everybody in the community has an opportunity to input uh, on these things so that we form up a vision in step three. So uh, after the first of the year, we'll be back uh, out to the community with what uh, we see are components of a vision and what we call strategic framework that would identify the five to six kind of key things that city really needs to focus on maybe over the next five to 10 years. Uh, get your input on that. Make sure that we heard you correctly and what you tell us tonight and that that's being reflected in a way that's meaningful to you before we get into the nitty gritty of the very specific things that the city needs to do to act on those things. Once uh, we put that together, which would be uh, later in the winter, early spring, uh, we'll bring that back out for a public rollout. Um, and that would probably be, you know, maybe somewhere around May. Um, one of the key things that's driving the plan at this time, this is the city's first strategic plan of this type, uh, is that uh, Mike Davis, uh, long-term uh, city administrator, has announced that he will be retiring in May. So this is a, a great way to really kind of get a, a great sense of where does the community want to go. Uh, what does the staff need to do? What does the council need to do to really help that transition uh, for that next administrator? So again, um, what's next uh, is that uh, this meeting will be available for folks who weren't able to join us tonight and they can um, fill out a, a survey monkey questionnaire to provide their input. So again, if you have uh, neighbors or friends who weren't able to make it tonight, um, they can go to the city's website um, and participate through that. We will develop the initial vision and goals and strategic framework and bring that back to the public uh, and the vision panels in our advisory committee early next year. And then uh, we'll put the detailed plan together and have a rollout uh, probably somewhere around May. So at this point, I'm going to turn it back to Meredith, who's going to uh, take, ask some questions about who's with us tonight so that you all uh, can get a sense of, of who your friends and neighbors are that are uh, with us on Zoom. Exactly. Um, thanks, Scott. 
So we are going to use um, the Zoom polling feature, and maybe you have uh, been in a meeting where we uh, you've used this feature before. Uh, but to give you a little heads up, it you'll have a uh, a box that pops up onto your screen. You can just uh, it kind of has the polling question as well as the um, number of options and answer options uh, for you. You just click um, your preferred option, and in some cases, you're able to select multiple options. So we'll review that with you, but uh, we'll walk through the poll together. This poll in particular is really focused on, again, getting a sense of who's in the room, who's participating tonight, um, and just give you a sense, you know, being in the more virtual um, uh, sort of platform, um, it's a little harder to tell than when we're all together around a table. So we'll go through a series of questions and um, just let us know if you have any uh, questions. So Nicole, with that, I think we're ready to uh, launch the first poll. Great, so first question, pretty simple. Um, wanting to know, do you live and or work in Middleton? Have a couple of options here. Just click on the one that best applies to you. Now you should be able to see the results um, here. And as you can see, uh, more than half are uh, residents of the um, of Middleton who are not necessarily employed, but uh, and a number that um, live and uh, work in Middleton, including working from home. So more than 75% either live and work in Middleton or um, are not employed, um, but, but live and are committed to Middleton. Um, okay, Nicole, if you want to do the second poll. So for those of you that said you live in Middleton, um, indicate how long you've lived here. Great. So it looks like a lot of longtime residents on the call today, 32% um, um, are between 10 and 35 years, which is a big range, but um, long-term residents as well as um, nearly 20% um, are, uh, have lived in Middleton longer than 36 years. So, um, but we do have some newer comers um, as well. So really a good mix of residents uh, on the call. Just to get a sense of age and demographics um, on the call, share your age. I should have said this up front. This is an anonymous poll, so feel free to be honest. <laughs> Great. So a range of ages on the call. Go down the next question. So um, please indicate which best describes your uh, racial or ethnic identity. And this is one where you can select multiple options um, for what um, feels uh, or you most identify. Great, can see the results there. You can go ahead to the next question. You can move through these ones quickly since kind of just a, again getting a sense of who's in the room. So um, also understanding if this is uh, you know something you uh, you already participate um, with the city uh, in a, either one of the committees or commissions councils or are you part of city staff so understanding um, your maybe current level of direct engagement with the city. So um, majority of folks on the call are involved in um, a committee commission or council or some other kind of um, form of involvement with the city, but also, um, you know, nearly a third that are not um, currently involved with the city. So some new participation, which is great to see. Okay. 
So also getting a sense of you've already participated, maybe we've already talked to you as part of this process. So have you, uh, did you participate in a Middleton strategic plan vision panel or on the advisory committee? Great. So some strong um, representation from our vision panels and advisory committee, which is really great to see. And we appreciate your continued engagement in the process, but again, also some new participation, which is also great. So getting into a bit more um, kind of your experience with the city, want to know what is your primary source of information regarding city information or resources or the decisions that might get made um, at the uh, council commission um, committee levels. So we have, uh, you know, snail mail, traditional mail options uh, through the city website. Um, city has multiple email channels or, or lists Are you subscribe to an email where you get your information a newspaper or other sort of uh, corporate media sources, more social media, or from your word of mouth from your neighbors. Okay, and great. So I think the uh, most people are getting uh, their information through one of the city's email channels, which is um, good to see that those options are uh, successful in getting out information as well as, you know, 24% said your primary source is the city's website. Um, you can kind of see at the bottom end that not a lot of, um, you know, media engagement on information from the city. So that's something to consider, but also, you know, that local newspapers and that sort of thing are kind of a, it's a challenging media landscape right now. So probably not too unusual. We can go to the next question. So the next few questions are all sort of a, we want to um, kind of rate what your, your perspective on um, government performance. Uh, so rate the job that the Middleton government does at welcoming resident involvement. Do you feel like they, um, the city of Middleton as an organization welcomes engagement from residents? And these next few questions are, um, we're reiterating questions that were asked as part of the comprehensive planning process, just to sort of um, take the temperature again on these questions that have been asked in the past. So as you can see in the results, 71% of um, you felt that uh, the city is doing a good job in uh, welcoming resident um, involvement and 11% say excellent, but a few, um, about 18% think that there's room for some improvement with either a fair or sort of poor uh, rating there. So again, rating the performance on the Middleton um, government, your uh, kind of perception of the value of services for the taxes that are paid in Middleton. So do you feel like you get a good value for your uh, tax dollars in terms of the services you receive in Middleton? So, this is a, a really great response. It looks like the you know, vast majority of folks feel like they're getting a good or excellent um, kind of value for their in, uh, tax dollars in the services they get from Middleton. Okay, and then um, again, kind of rating the performance of the Middleton government and informing residents about issues facing the community. So we talked about some of the channels that you have, but do you, uh, you know, feel like the message comes through? Okay, so 48% uh, um, felt like it was, uh, the city does a good job in informing residents of issues um, and 37 kind of fair, so maybe some room for improvement with again, 11% feeling like there's uh, sort of a, a poor job um, informing residents. So some room for improvement there and maybe thinking about how those channels that we talked about earlier can be better utilized to get information out there. Was that our last question, Nicole? That was the last question, yes. Okay, great. 
Well, thanks for everybody for participating in that. Hopefully you get a better sense of um, where or who else is in the room with you and then some of you know what is on people's minds in terms of how information is, is shared and um, and value. I think those are going to be topics that we uh, touch on in the breakout session. So thanks. From here, I think we're going to um, discuss some of the initial analysis that we've uh, completed over the course of this uh, strategic planning process thus far. So Scott, if you want to take us um, kind of in an overview of that initial analysis. Will do. Thank you, uh, Meredith. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, for you folks at home, uh, if the question box is still up on your screen, if you just click the little red X, uh, it'll go away and then you can see uh, the PowerPoint slides here that uh, we'll be sharing. So wanted to just sort of quickly give you an overview of some of the data and analysis that we've collected. I think many of you know, uh, as a company, Vanderwall and Associates has been involved uh, with Middleton on many uh, planning and economic development initiatives for uh, probably close to 30 years. So we have already a great understanding of the community, uh, but we've also learned some interesting things along the way uh, in this process to diving into issues that we previously hadn't really been uh, involved with or, or had much awareness of. So uh, it's been kind of fun really getting to um, know and understand the community at a much deeper level. I want to first start with uh, assets and kind of economic opportunities as sort of the foundation for this plan. What, what, what does the city really have to build on and how does that align then with sort of economic trends and, and where things could go in the future uh, to really continue the success that the community has had uh, in its growth and development? So we have a series of maps here that I'll just kind of quickly uh, review. And again, if you want to spend more time with us, all of this uh, will be on the website. An earlier version of this is already up there as well. Um, so I'll just kind of, uh, uh, kind of hit on the highlights here. But one of, the, one of the key assets that comes up time and again uh, in the way people who live in town describe it is our open space and conservation assets um, and resources within the community, certainly um, with the uh, Pheasant Branch Conservancy being a big one, but also the golf course uh, and the many parks, uh, as well as being on the lake. So open space and, and conservation areas are a great defining feature uh, for the community, for both residents and, and even people who don't live in town. Next is uh, the location uh, of the community. Um, the accessibility, um, uh, being on the Beltline, University Avenue, very easy to get into Madison, to get downtown, to get out to the interstate system, as well as connectivity within the community. So there's uh, uh, pretty easy to get around from a, no, a road network. You're building a bike network. Uh, we do understand that you know uh, transit is limited, uh, and the city continues to work with Madison to improve on that. But that basically your location and accessibility uh, are also really a key asset, and one of the reasons why you've you've seen so much growth uh, in your business parks. Uh, following that, uh, schools. Um, Again, an issue when you ask folks why they came to town, why they live in town, uh, the strength of the school district uh, is, is always right towards the top of the list. Um, and there's some uh, private schools as well. Uh, and we know the very northeastern corner of town is also uh, part of uh, the Wanakee district, which also has a very excellent uh, reputation and uh, a quality program. Employment centers, um, you know, um, it's really not accurate to call uh, Middleton a bedroom community of Madison. It's so much more than that with the uh, larger employers that you've been able to attract. You really are one of the key uh, employment and activity centers uh, now in Dane County, uh, as well as your downtown as a destination um, and the sort of growing development along uh, Parmenter. So, um, you really have a, a lot to offer, um, both for folks within your own community as well as folks from uh, outside of your community, and, and you're a net uh, importer of, um, of workers. So there are more people working in Middleton than there are workers that live in Middleton. <laughs> and then uh, the growth boundaries. As, um, 
Bill mentioned in his opening remarks, uh, the city's ability to sort of grow outward, which is um, a lot of what you have done over the last several decades to um, increase your tax base and um, uh, grow your resources and, and things that are available. Those uh, really aren't going to be available much more in the future. You've got growth agreements with the uh, towns to the north. Uh, you've got uh, Madison really completely at your southern border and, you know, significant uh, environmental and topographic challenges trying to grow to the west, which really means that growth and development in the future is going to be more up uh, than out. And so uh, you're already starting to see some of that. Uh, the comprehensive plan sort of sets the stage uh, for more of that to try to do that in a way that's really uh, complementary to and, and positive for the community, but it's definitely a change uh, from uh, a lot of what you've seen previously. In terms of economic opportunities, uh, there's kind of a lot here to digest. So I'll just, again, sort of hit the highlights. Um, but when we kind of look at Middleton's position within Dane County, within the larger region, and where are opportunities to uh, further grow and develop uh, your tax base, your employment base, your residential base. A couple of thoughts are um, exclu <coughs> excursion rail uh, to downtown Madison could be a possibility in the future. Um, infrastructure for continued airport safety uh, in compliance. Implement the North Mendota Parkway uh, to alleviate some of the traffic uh, across the county beyond just the current belt line. Uh, continuing to invest uh, in value sustainability. Being a leader in stormwater management. Um, again, as I talked before, integrating more mass transit, infill growth and miss, missing middle housing. So this is housing for um, folks that uh, are maybe newly created households uh, that are maybe starting careers, um, helping to find ways to make housing more affordable, growing more high-tech companies, and then further growth through uh, inclusion and diversity. In terms of city finance and operations, I mentioned that you know one of our partners in this uh, project is uh, Public Administration Associates. So uh, here's a couple of their kind of uh, quick findings as they've been looking at the city's finances and sort of looking at the governmental structure or, you know, organizational structure. Um, one is that uh, in terms of finances and general fund balance, um, you had almost 31% uh, unassigned fund balance compared to a goal of 33. So this means this is money in the bank. This is uh, funds that the city has. Uh, call it a rainy day fund or a contingency or what have you, but um, some money is set aside for specific projects, others is unassigned to be able to use uh, for emergencies. And so having a, a third of your sort of savings, if you will, available is a, a great goal and you're uh, almost right on top of that. Um, property tax rate, you know, we asked earlier and it seemed like folks really felt they were getting a lot of value for uh, their taxes. Uh, Middleton, in fact, has one of the lowest tax rates at $5.65 per thousand of, of any of your peer communities in Dane County. So from a tax standpoint, uh, very low compared to everybody else, uh, while also providing a high level of services um, and the largest tax rate percent decrease over the last five years. So you're your tax rate has gone down as the development and values have gone up. Um, debt management, um, Middleton um, only has a little bit less than 20% of its legally available uh, debt capacity. So the state puts limits on how much money communities can borrow based on their uh, total valuation. And so uh, Middleton has really done an excellent job of managing um, its borrowing. And as a result, uh, has has borrowed uh, much less uh, than what you would be permitted to do, which at the same time gives you capacity to take on new projects as the community determines that they're needed. And then lastly, with the tax increment districts, as Bill indicated, that TID 3 is really one of the most successful districts uh, in the state, um, has over 500 million in new value since it was created. And that's, I might add, 
uh, taking into account that Middleton has done three large subtractions where they've taken development and value out of the district uh, of more than 300 million. Uh, so tax in increment district number three uh, has really generated more than a, almost a billion dollars uh, in new value since it was created. Uh, TID 5 uh, is really just starting to get going. It was created a while back, but unfortunately sort of right on the, the eve of the Great Recession. And so now it's really starting to see activity. Uh, city just did an amendment to add some properties on University Avenue. And so uh, really expecting to see that district really take off here in the next few years. In terms of the operational review and staffing levels, um, some of the uh, positions to be considered would be a communications specialist, as you know, you all just indicated a little bit ago. Um, getting an understanding of what's happening at the city, what decisions are being made and why, what are available. Uh, communications um, is, you know, we have lots of opportunities through social media and the web, but at the same time, uh, trying to find that information in a way that's really digestible and understanding uh, is a challenge for every community and one here too. And so a suggestion of some kind of a communication specialist uh, would uh, help with that. Um, uh, a part-time events coordinator, and I think uh, there's been some discussion about uh, moving forward with that, maybe even in this next year's budget uh, to be paid for by the CDA. Um, a stormwater engineer or technician funded out of the stormwater fund to really help advance those initiatives. Um, you know, as we saw from the flood in 2018, uh, stormwater is really critical, and as our climate continues to change, will continue to be a big issue. And then a, either a changing a part-time to a full-time uh, job uh, for a senior center volunteer manager. The senior center uh, has a, a large number of volunteers that really perform some great work. Uh, the coordinating those all is really literally turning out to be kind of a full-time job. So those are some just some of the positions that um, uh, public administration associates um, feel should be considered. In terms of efficiency, um, you know, you have 31 committee, committees, commissions, and uh, authorities, which gives a lot of people uh, opportunities to participate, um, but consolidating or changing meetings to maybe some ad hoc status to just uh, try to manage all that process in uh, so that there's sort of consistency between them is something to be looked at. Um, functional reassignments, um, idea of maybe transferring the airport and transit from community development to the public works department, just in terms of who oversees those functions, um, splitting the department of public works director and city engineer, uh, to create new internal service department. And then uh, lastly, this idea of a civic campus, um, you know, work had started about a new city hall and library complex. Um, given that we're sort of now in this new post-COVID world and additional remote work, uh, revisiting really what the needs are for a city hall and a library, and how do we uh, fit uh, the needs of the senior center into that uh, as well. Wanted also um, talk about uh, what we've heard in our discussions with the council uh, and department heads. So in, a, uh, in addition to meeting with the council as a whole, uh, early in the summer to discuss this process, we had one-on-one -on -one meetings with all the council members. And then we also had a very large group discussion uh, with the department heads to get their input on how things are going and uh, where things maybe could occur in the future. So some takeaways from our council uh, interviews. And again, this is just, a summary of things that we've heard. This doesn't mean that every council member mentioned this or that necessarily everybody agreed, but these were kind of recurrent themes that we heard across the discussions that we had. Um, one is that you've got uh, council members with wide areas of interest, uh, but also sharing a lot of common interests. So we thought that was great that uh, the council uh, kind of between them collectively uh, their own areas of interest cover a wide gamut of things, but everybody also seems to be able to come together with some shared common interests in terms of what are the essential services of the city uh, with public safety and, and public works. 
Um, assets that they identified were excellent schools, the small town feel, easy to access to Madison, um, and exceptional value uh, for and high level of services for the taxes that are paid and the growing success of the downtown. Um, needs that were discussed were the civic campus, stormwater improvements, uh, education on infill development and trying to figure out affordable home ownership opportunities as part of that infill. So um, in addition to the rental, how can we get more housing that's available for ownership at a lower price? Uh, alternative modes of transportation, um, improve communications with the public, and uh, be more welcoming and engaging with underrepresented communities and providing opportunities for them to be uh, play a greater role in decision making. With the uh, department heads, um, a lot of overlap uh, with those. A um, couple of things that they pointed out was that they felt the city really responded well to COVID, both in providing services to the residents, but also uh, in taking care of city employees. Um, recent investments that the city's made in its um, information technology and a new personnel manager have been really affected and, uh, effective and appreciated and have really helped streamline operations. Um, good collaboration across departments and uh, a good relationship between staff and the city council. Um, uh, events nationally and in Madison area, though, have had some negative impacts on morale in the police department and public safety. Uh, and have had some um, you know, impacts on staffing turnover. And some needs that were discussed were that the library and senior center are, are very highly used and valued, but are really at their maximum capacity. So some consideration needs to be made on, on how to improve those. Um, staffing levels are not keeping up with demand. So the staff is really at its capacity in terms of things that they're able to do um, and they would like to do more, but are, are really um, out of hands and ability and resources to do much more. Uh, the staff would like to see improved engagement with uh, underrepresented communities, as well as increasing the diversity of their own department staffing, and that a uh, feeling that the community in general needs to be more welcoming um, to the um, BIPOC communities and that the council really needs to take a true leadership role uh, with that. As part of that, there was a, an equity survey done uh, by our partners at EQT, and I'm going to turn that over to Myra to review those results. Thank you, Scott. Um, so building upon the interviews with the council and department heads, Equity by Design um, developed and sent out a survey. Um, and the survey, um, the, the purpose of it was to better understand um, their knowledge, you know, skills and experience with equity, anti-racism and inclusion as a city of Middleton council member or as a city of Middleton um, department head. These are just some of the highlights um, from the survey. These are an aggregate form um, because we wanted folks to be very candid about their experience and um, also how comfortable they feel with the terms of uh, DEI. So these are self selecting. So when we ask respondents about what they feel when, when we talk about diversity, equity, anti racism, and inclusion, 80% of council members worry occasionally about saying the wrong thing when talking about diversity, equity, anti-racism, and inclusion. Well, 20% do not worry about saying the wrong thing um, when talking about diversity, equity, anti-racism, and inclusion. Majority of the council members have limited training uh, with DNI work, and about 20% have experience and understand and feel confident about sharing their knowledge. The council members um, are evenly split about 40% with feeling that they somewhat understand how racism works and understanding how racism works, but are unsure how to talk about it. Council members also are evenly split about 40% with not knowing how to assess the viability, sustainability, and success of equitable impacts of policy um, on groups of people with having limited understanding on how to assess. 
Um, so definitely it's been a, quite an array of response from, from people on their comfort levels when talking about diversity, equity, anti-racism and inclusion, but also about feeling confident talking about and saying, you know, um, being comfortable with talking about some of the DNI work. Now we move on to the next slide. We can talk about some of what their response was from the department heads. Um, same survey and um, department heads worry occasionally about saying the wrong thing when talking about diversity, equity, anti-racism and inclusion. However, 90% of them are comfortable when others talk about diversity, equity, anti-racism and inclusion. 40% of them have limited training with any prior training education or experience with diversity, equity, anti-racism and inclusion. While 30% feel they understand and have experience with it. Respondents are somewhat understand how race is constructed, but are split between feeling unsure how to talk about it with understanding it and feeling confident about talking up with, about it with others. Department head respondents are evenly split about 40% with having a limited understanding on how to assess the viability, sustainability and success of equitable impact of policy and groups of people with knowing how to assess, but are unsure about how to put it into action. So this can also gives us an idea. There's, there's some work to be done um, for, for people to feel much more comfortable talking about uh, DNI work, but also, um, people were very open to, to having conversations around it and feel that now is the right time to continue um, the work of uh, diversity, equity, anti-racism and inclusion. And then I'll head it over to Lupita. Okay, sorry about that. I was having issues unmuting myself. <laughs> So as part of the um, process, as Scott shared, we also have an advisory committee that we've been working with. So we had our first advisory committee meeting in mid-October where we really shared a lot of this information that we've gone through with you guys and um, went through an exercise where we wanted to hear from them on, you know, out of everything that we have shared, what are the things that are really resonating with them? So we just wanted to highlight a few of those issues and ideas that came up. This is not exhaustive of everything that we discussed, um, but just some highlights uh, for the group to be thinking about. Um, so this first thing was just affordable housing. There was a, an understanding and a discussion that there's a need for affordable housing in Middleton, not only from a rental standpoint, but also affordable ownership opportunities. Um, so there was also a lot of discussion too in terms of the need for a communications person. Um, that could be that person from city staff that communicates internally and externally, but also recognize that there's uh, staffing needs beyond that communications person. And um, especially as more plans are being implemented, just more support from um, with staff to get those things completed. Um, and then the next thing was uh, the discussion on sustainability and equity just being embraced across all departments and sort of seeing it more as like second nature, something that's already thought about and included in every piece of uh, the city organization. Um, we also discussed uh, the need for more diverse representation across staff and not only staff across all uh, committees, particularly um, I guess the committee, so it wasn't so much in terms of race and ethnicity, but it was also just socioeconomic diversity included in all the aspects of um, the committees as well. And then this last thing that was discussed as a group um, that we wanted to highlight uh, was just the need for a community center for everyone for all ages that can serve the population. So those were just some you know, ideas that were resonating with the group. Again, not exhaustive of the entire discussion, but again, we're really here to hear from you guys today. So we just wanted to uh, share those. And then the next step in the process, if we wanna go to the next slide, is going into these breakout sessions. Um, so the next slide, I can just share a little bit about what we're gonna do. So after this, um, Nicole has already split everyone into different breakout rooms. And we're gonna uh, wanna hear from you guys on, you know, we again shared a lot with you 
And we're gonna go through an exercise of just identifying or hearing from you guys on community identity and assets and funding and resources and going through a set of questions. So as part of this, um, you're gonna see a pop-up window that will tell you to join a breakout session. You'll have a facilitator present in the room and they will lead the discussion and be taking notes as you guys are going through the different questions. And then afterwards, we will just regroup and uh, just share again, reshare what's next, and then just uh, wrap it up for the night. All right, so with that, I think, Nicole, if you want to send us off to our own breakout rooms. All right, ready? Here we go. All right, we should all be back in the room. Great. All right. So um, from here, we just wanted to pull everybody back together real briefly to um, thank you all for coming. We appreciate all of the input you've provided tonight in terms of from the polling questions and um, the breakout sessions and you know having the great discussions we all had with our neighbors. I think that we got um, in our group, we got a lot out of our, our time together. So just appreciate you being here tonight and um, just a reminder of some of what's next and, and next steps for this process. So if there's uh, anybody that you know that wasn't able to be here tonight, um, this recording and the questionnaire will be uh, posted on the city's website on the strategic plan page of the city's website. Um, and it will really reflect what was discussed tonight. So you don't have to go. And if you were here tonight and participated, then um, it's the same information that's on the community questionnaire from the polling questions to the to the breakout sessions, really. So um, but if anyone wasn't able to be here, they can can still contribute. So please emphasize that with with others. Um, we'll be taking all of this feedback and developing um, our vision and goals and framework 
um, what kind of here in this kind of winter um, end of 21, um, beginning of 2022, and bringing it back, um, bringing back our advisory committee and vision panels to start sharing this progress and um, getting reactions and vetting what we have come up with. And um, these things will start sort of slowly rolling out um, to the public for more discussion. So this will not be the last time that you see us or hear from us, um, but we will kind of talk again next time when we have um, the strategic, strategic uh, framework drafted. Um, so just kind of be on the lookout in the beginning of next year for another event. And if you have any questions in the meantime, or you think of something that you didn't get a chance to talk about tonight, um, please feel free to reach out my contact information, um, as well as you know many other um, folks associated with the plan. Um, their contact information is on the city's website and would be happy to um, take your comments or answer any questions that we can. But we just really appreciate you being here tonight and hopefully you have a good rest of your evening.